And you can see the results here, you know, green is really seemingly outperforming uh, the red. Uh, so the stop loss one in terms of profit, and then we run the statistics and boom, oh, well, you know, we can see again uh, by modal distribution here and, um, and the uh, stop loss strategy is about 0 0.2 percentage, uh, 0 0.2 points, 0 0.2 points lower uh, than the one uh, that is unconstrained. Uh, so, so the sharp ratio is definitely significantly lower on average. And, and this, if you do this at 10,000 runs, you will see it's actually quite consistent. So uh, again, same behavior. And we've got, like before, we've got a, a around 20% probability of our sharp ratio of being better with a stop loss than without. All right, and so um, I run through these correlations again, and you can see similar, again, 1.35 slope, and around 0 0.5 uh, intercept or minus 0 0.5 intercept shifting uh, the slope down. Uh, that's pretty clear. And given that, we expect a negative slope on this plot. Again, you know, as the sharp ratios go higher, uh, our stop loss strategy is actually getting uh, closer in terms of sharp ratio. Uh, to, to the original unbounded one. And, and you can see here, it almost goes to zeros difference. So, so we're really seeing quite a strong trend here. Uh, as, as our sharp ratios of the underlying strategy increases, then uh, our stop loss uh, actually becomes more helpful for risk management. Okay, and finally, we look at the profits and you can see here the profits drop on average quite significantly from 400% down to about 250%. And the probability of being better uh, in terms of profit with the stop loss is just under 10%. All right, so again, you know, that just shows us, uh, you know, generally stop losses don't really do that well for risk management. Now, I'm sure you're eager to see how this uh, fares uh, for our sector ETFs, because of course they give us a much better cross-section of, uh, of the market. And I guess, actually I haven't done this uh, yet myself, uh, so I'll be really interested to see the results. But I guess uh, what we see will probably be quite consistent, again, with the results we have seen before. And so let's run this. Now, after we've seen the results here, uh, what I would like to do is before I finish the video, I will show you how the same uh, works with a profit take because quite often what happens is people submit bracket orders. So they have a stop loss and they have a profit take. And so let's just, uh, once we have seen the results uh, here for the sector ETFs, let's just see what happens uh, when we also introduce a profit take that's fairly straightforward to do um, in a vectorized way. I've uh, done this in the code already. So all I have to do is just make a few little changes in our parameters and then we can see, oh, maybe, you know, the profit take, because it goes so well with the stop loss, maybe that will help us. That will increase our risk management capabilities and actually give us better sharp ratios uh, than before. I leave you to guess what's going to happen, especially if you're a big fan of stop losses and profit takes. And we will see this in a moment. So um, first of all, we're running this. And again, these are the results. Uh, we already know approximately what they mean. So let's go ahead and run the statistics. And again, wow, very strong bimodal distribution here. And interestingly, uh, the statistics are very quite similar to our moving average crossover. Now, this is not really a surprise because this particular uh, strategy, the Bollinger Band, is not that different from a moving average uh, crossover strategy. So we would expect uh, to some degree similar results. And so you can see here that, um, again, we've got about a four times better sharp ratio uh, with this strategy than with the previous one. Although uh, you can already see that, um, you know, it's not, not going so well um, overall. 
So what's the probabilities of that being better? The Sharpe ratio is only 3.5%. Uh, so, so, you know, as soon as we have a strategy that isn't quite so great in terms of a Sharpe ratio, then stop losses will be really detrimental. And let's just confirm this again here with our tests. You can see here the slope 1.44 minus 44, 45%. Same here, we got a negative slope. So again, uh, it'll take quite a while uh, for that difference to catch up. So we need um, a lot more sharp ratio uh, that, that this difference between uh, the stop loss strategies and the non stop loss strategies will become zero. And the PLs, of course. Here you can see 175% uh, versus 48% big difference um, probability only 3% of being better uh, than the actual uh, non-constraint strategy okay so that's interesting now um, the question is all right so so maybe uh, we can manage our risk a little bit better if we introduce a profit take and um, that's easy to do so all I have to do here is you can see P takes, so these profit take values, um, I've got uh, at the moment, it's just it's just a, a placeholder basically, and I set it to 10,000, so it never actually hits the profit take, but I can change that. And so here I basically take profit between zero and 30%. So if it goes somewhere between zero and 30%, I'll uh, take profits. And so I'm just doing this uh, for the strategy uh, with the sector EDFs that we've done before. And I just use these uh, Bollinger uh, band, the simple Bollinger band strategy to run this. And so let's do this and we will see what happens uh, again. You know, I, I'm also in for a surprise. I haven't actually uh, tested this before for this specific case. So, so It'll be interesting to see whether our profit takes actually help us a little bit. And again, you have to remember, this is just a statistical uh, thing. It does not necessarily mean that your specific strategy uh, gets uh, worse. But overall, uh, if you use these, uh, we have already seen that there's a pretty high probability that stop losses uh, may not actually help you. Um, whether that's true for profit takes, uh, we will find out in a moment so it's just running a few more seconds and um, then we're done again you know see how how fast these vectorized vectors run it's pretty impressive and i'm actually really enjoying building them although it's not always as easy as it is and you can see here oh profit takes really very limiting um, they really hit us hard <laughs> and so here our profits are not that fantastic now um, let's see what happens here Ooh, okay so you can see our profit pro average profit dropped from 38% to 0 0.08 oh sorry to 8% so on average uh, introducing um, profit takes makes things even a lot worse uh, than before. So not only uh, are we constraining uh, the strategy on the downside, we're also constraining on the upside. So it means we're making even less profit on average than we did before, because before I think we, we were over 10% with our average profit. Now we're below 10% over this long period of time. That's not great. Um, now what's our probability of our sharp ratio being better, uh, it's only 2.2%. Of course, uh, we're not too happy with that. All right, and you can see here, this is this is super interesting. Um, now, this behavior is quite different uh, from the stop loss. So uh, we're basically seeing uh, no correlation here between our sharp ratios without stop loss and our sharp ratios with stop loss. That's surprising and I still need to think a little bit about how to interpret that. Um, I leave it to you also to maybe draw your own conclusions. So I suppose we will see a pretty flat uh, thing here. Oh, interesting. Actually, as we get better with the sharp ratio, uh, 
in the unconstrained strategy, um, you can see here the difference between uh, the stop loss uh, strategy and the sharp ratio strategy increases. So what that means is basically, <clears throat> if we introduce a profit take, it makes actually this makes the strategies actually worse uh, in terms of risk management. So definitely profit take adds another uh, terrible uh, element to it. So, so we're actually a, almost uh, getting a, uh, a, a worse a squared than, than we had uh, when we use uh, only the stop loss. Uh, so that's not great. Uh, so let's just see what happens to the profits and you can see here as well uh, the overall uh, profits they just they just go so bad they go from 173 to 7 percent uh, and that's that's just that's just awful actually I said percent when I quoted the sharp races earlier uh, I remember now so apologies it wasn't percent it was just the sharp ratio which has no dimensions <laughs> Um, and what's the probability of this being better than this? It's 0.1%. Uh, so the probability of our profit take stop loss strategy to be better than unconstrained is just phenomenally low. All right. Now, um, that just goes to show uh, using profit takes uh, or specifically uh, for, for uh, risk management is not necessarily a great idea um, and yes I mean it makes sense to some extent because what we do is when we build a strategy that isn't constrained we naturally let it run and we let it go its course and that can really uh, that there's something to say for this and how do we manage risk without stop losses well uh, one of the best ways to manage risk is good diversification having assets, underlying assets, underlying strategies that do not have uh, very strong correlations with each other. If we want to check out what the correlations between those are, we, we just take a covariance matrix, it's fairly straightforward. Um, but but that's, uh, that as risk management is much, much better, for example, than um, introducing these profit takes and stop losses. Clearly, there's not much uh, to be gained by using them. Um, and um, the other thing, of course, to remember is if you want to do these sweeps, please use vectorized spec tests. Otherwise, the talk or the, the, the video I've done here would have taken a lot longer uh, to do uh, than it has now. So I leave it to you to draw your own conclusions about uh, stop losses. I think the uh, results here are relatively conclusive. They give us a good picture. But of course, you have to do your own research and apply your own stuff to understand this uh, better. I think, um, to me at least, this little exercise was extremely interesting. And I really encourage you uh, to do it yourself. Uh, you will learn a lot. So thanks for watching in this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I will definitely see you in the next video. Bye bye.